ABC, it's Danny. Um, just wanted to join in on James Griffith's excellent thread about whether or not it is rude to call an album overrated. Um, James was on the YouTube uh, Vinyl Community Facebook page, and he called uh, Court of the Crimson King by Kim, King Crimson overrated and was, I guess, taking a task for it. And so he started this really excellent thread. Um, his video is fantastic. Dean over at Grandma's Handbag um, posted another amazing response. And then Andrew at Tales from the Crate also um, also posted a fantastic response. So I just wanted to record myself rambling about it and see, see where I get. Um, so I guess where I'll start is... That, that simply to call an album overrated isn't really saying much. At least devoid of context, to my mind. Uh, same to call an album un underrated. If I think when we do that, we are responding to what, what Dean really beautifully coined the canon of received wisdom. That we're looking out at the world and saying, "Look, oh God, everybody seems to have a positive opinion of this or a negative opinion of this. And I disagree with that. But if you're having a personal conversation, say you and a, a, a record collecting friend are talking about a record and you say, oh, that's overrated. Unless you describe why you think so, what kind of ratings you, you've heard that seem to be too much, um... You know, then then maybe you haven't said too much, but I do think it's a, it's a one of the most useful tools that we have as people who are clearly interested in discussing music um, to start a conversation. So I guess I'll just start with um, I think there's a reason this has popped up in in James and Dean's video, and and you know if there was any album that I I had to nominate for you know, most overrated record of all time, um, it would be Sgt. Pepper. And, and to say that, I don't even mean to say, I, I'm not saying that I think Sgt. Pepper is, is totally overrated, but it is literally overrated. I, I think if you're looking at, you know, I don't know how many best of lists or 101 albums to hear before you die or 100 greatest rock albums you know it would be hard to find a lot of those that don't have this album in the top 10 um i grew up uh born in the 80s and and so spent most of my music magazine reading time in the in the late 90s and the early 2000s um, just constantly, constantly, constantly reading about why this was the greatest album ever. And in my own personal experience from listening to my dad's records and just what I knew of the Beatles, it wasn't my favorite Beatles record. But when I was in college, I took a, um, a really excellent course uh, about the history of, of pop music in America. Um, and it was taught by this a rock critic whose name is Billy Altman. Um, if you ever see anything that he's written, I, I highly, highly recommend it. And the way that he structured the class was to walk us through, basically starting with the Carter family. Um, he moved us through the music of Tin Pan Alley, um, into some blues. And then, you know, he, he literally just walked us through the actual history of pop music in America. And we listened to it front to back. So by the time we got to the Beatles... I had heard all the music that came before, and we had, we were listening to the Beach Boys' um, surf pop, you know, and to hear the Beatles in that context, and then to hear, you know, what Sgt. Pepper meant in that context, um, reordered my understanding forever about why this album keeps showing up on all of these lists. Uh in the actual context of music history, this album is to, to call it a sea change is maybe an understatement. It, it's it's a lightning bolt 
I mean, this is this is a a, a fork in the road. It, this is this is a huge deal, uh, and you know, it's all it, it, from viewed from that angle, it's almost impossible to overrate this record. But without that context, if you've just spent years and years and years and years having somebody tell you, oh, this is the greatest record of all time, or this is the most important rock record of all time, it's very easy to see how somebody could see that this is underrated, or, excuse me, overrated. Um, so, uh, yeah, I really think that context is everything. Um, you know, who 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 is overrating the album? Uh, is it why doesn't it, you know who are you speaking to are you are you addressing the the canon of received wisdom when you say that this record is overrated or are you just saying that i don't like this as much um as other things that i like um i've heard it put and i don't know where this quote is from that uh that all criticism is autobiography um which i think is is absolutely true and also um in you know from that angle, uh, you can call everything overrated as much as you want. Nobody has any right to tell you how to write your autobiography. Um, uh, I mean, that's ultimately that's that's the side I come down on. It's not rude to call an album overrated, um, but I think it's interesting. It's interesting why why that language is used so much and why somebody might find it, you know, a little triggering and offensive. Um, because I think as music fans, we are always interfacing with this canon of received wisdom, you know, um, and, and I, I keep using that, but at least as far as I understand it, that's it's Dean's way of describing the larger conversation, the cultural conversation around music and what makes good music and, and, um, and what is overrated and what is underrated and what belongs on a top 100 list and what you need to listen to, um, If I was talking to a lifelong jazz fan who had a world-class jazz collection, and I said, oh, you know what the best out, the best jazz record of all time, though, is Kind of Blue, Miles Davis, Kind of Blue. I could absolutely imagine a scenario in which that person would say, that album is overrated. I'm tired of hearing about that album. They know that album front to back, note for note. And... They're more interested in a discussion that moves beyond that, you know. Um, if you if you're working on finishing up your BYG XUL collection, you know, uh, some fresh faced kid talking about how great Kind of Blue is, it might be in your past. It might not be a relevant conversation for you. But so for that person, let's say Kind of Blue is overrated. If you are the opposite of that, if you're just a, if you're just starting to get into jazz and you don't know where to begin, the idea that this album is overrated is ludicrous and insane. You do need to hear this album if you have any interest in jazz, in in popular music, especially American popular music, and if you have any any intention to understand the history, the story, the world of the music that you're enjoying, it is ludicrous. To call kind of blue overrated, but these are the kinds of records that get called overrated. The kinds of records that everybody has already heard tell of. The kind of records that everybody has already seen rated. And you know that's why I say in some ways to to call something overrated isn't to say much unless you fill in the context. So you're just saying, you know, I've heard about this too much. It and you know, maybe then that it didn't live up to to whatever hype surrounded it. Um, and although personally, you know, if I did meet somebody who came along who listened to Kind of Blue first time and was like, that's totally overrated, I would think that person was crazy or at least severely lacking in taste. But that would mean nothing for their experience. Um, 
yeah, I think I've lost the, I've lost my train here. But, um, but I guess suffice to say, I think that the ability, well, I, one last thing I want to say, I guess, is, is that it's, it's very, very clear, and maybe this is repeating my point, but it's very clear to you when you say this album is overrated. You, you remember that the list you read in Spin and the list you read in Rolling Stone and the list you just read online and yada, yada, yada. You know exactly who you're talking about, who rated the album too highly for you, what, what the canon of <clears throat> received wisdom is that you've observed and held up to that you find it to be overrated. But what somebody else has read could be a completely different list of, of things, a completely different list of opinions. Um, and, and so it means a very different thing to them to hear what you're saying. Um, that is the interesting thing. That's the, that's the wonderful thing, is that we all have these disparate experiences and that there is, there is some common ground. There is this, the canon of received wisdom, this, the, 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 the plane of shared experience, I guess, would be, um, you know, the world in which Sgt. Pepper is a highly rated record. The world in which, kind of, blue, the, the, the fact that we can take for granted certain ideas about how our cultural culture discusses certain pieces of art. Um, there is a landscape of shared experience. And I think as, as both Dean and Andrew pointed out, that's a constantly evolving thing. Um, and it changes for each generation. You know, each generation says, we're taking this part with us and we're removing this other part. Um, and it happens so rapidly. I mean, emo was a giant musical offshoot of punk when I was, when I was, in my late teens, early twenties, and there's a new, there's like a neo emo movement happening, and some of the bands that are important to that scene from my youth are bands that I go, yeah, totally, and some of the other bands, like uh, say American Football, to my mind, are bands that nobody talked about, I never heard about, and they seem to have no bearing. Um, I'm off into the weeds here a little bit, but. But for each individual, your understanding of what the musical landscape is is constantly shifting as you hear more, learn more, discuss more. And then multiplied by many orders of magnitude, that is happening for the culture as well. And so we, it is our responsibility, I think, as interested music fans it's not even necessarily our responsibility it's a privilege it's um it's the fun of of the vc or or that's why we do this we're tending to that landscape of shared experience we are you know to say that album's overrated is to pull a weed you know um to say this record is underrated and more people need to hear it is to water the ground and hopefully to expand its reach um so I think it's vital that that we do that. I think that's what's exciting about the VC. That's what is interesting about the VC. That's why I keep coming back. Um, and in many ways, the overrated, underrated is... It's uninteresting. It's You don't talk about the door that you just walked through when you enter a home. You You look at the larger home. I think underrated, overrated is the door through which we enter into a conversation about um, how we feel about a certain type of music. And the conversation beyond that is the important thing, and the whole thing must be protected. Um, so, anyway, it's not rude. It's necessary. Um, and I hope that was somewhat coherent, and uh, I'll be back soon. I've got a, I've got a, a pile I don't know how I'm going to get through. Um, so I'll have a few more videos coming your way soon. And, uh, yeah, talk to you guys soon. Thank you, James, uh, Dean, and Andrew for this excellent thread. And I'll be looking forward to anybody else's opinions that I can find. So see you guys soon.